So, uh, thank you to Junko uh, for providing a, a good overview of what the CBD is. So I guess by now we're all on the same page with regards to uh, the substance of the convention and the three objectives. Uh, so one thing I will mention that in addition to all those things that Junko and Adriana highlighted, um, the Convention on Biodiversity is also a framework for a number of specialized legally binding treaties, uh, and uh, one of them is the Nagoya Protocol uh, on Access and Benefit Sharing. The Nagoya Protocol, again, is a legal, legal framework for uh, national uh, legal action. Uh, it was adopted uh, in 2010 um, and entered into force in 2014. Um, so it provides the legal framework for implementing uh, the third objective of the convention, <clears throat> which is the fair and equitable sharing of benefits arising from the utilization of genetic resources. Uh, the goal of that is to contribute uh, the funds generated in the process towards conservation and sustainable use of biological diversity. Um, so there is uh, a little bit of ambiguity of what the different definitions are. Uh, so the, the Nagoya Protocol applies to genetic resources within the scope of Article 15 of the Convention. Uh, it also applies to traditional knowledge associated with these resources uh, and to the benefits arising from uh, the utilization of the resources and associated traditional knowledge. It does not apply to genetic resources covered under other specialized treaties, uh, although that's a matter of a debate. Uh, it also does not uh, apply to uh, genetic resources from in areas beyond national jurisdiction. That's also up for discussion. <clears throat> and it does not apply to genetic resources from non-signatory parties. You can see this on this map. It is uh, a little bit outdated, and I apologize for that. Um, there are um, currently 110, at least last time I looked, 110 uh, UN uh, member states that are parties to the Nagoya Protocol. A few of them are non parties, uh, but members of the convention, and the United States and the Holy See, two notable members who are members of neither. <clears throat> the goal of the, so the underlying goal of the Nagoya Protocol is to curb biopiracy, um, and there is, there are some definitions uh, that are provided for what genetic resources are, what is genetic material, and what is utilization. That is interpreted uh, in various forms by different uh, legal uh, wording used by different countries. There is also international translation uh, overlaid on top of that. So there is a little bit of ambiguity as to uh, what exactly these things represent, because naturally, being a consensus organization, uh, the convention uses a fairly vague wording that could be interpreted in, in various ways. Uh, there are two key points uh, that are uh, I guess commonly agreed upon is that there should not be biopiracy going on um, and as a result there needs to be prior informed consent and uh, there need to be mutually agreed terms when genetic resources or any biological resources from one country are being used by another country. This is a simplified uh, scheme of how this, uh, this should operate in reality, and we're going to have a little quiz after this session, so uh, I'm sure you can memorize it. Uh, just kidding. Um, one uh, take-home message that I would like to uh, make sure that everyone uh, has is that although there are countries who are non-signatories, uh, it does not necessarily mean that uh, the, the laws do not apply to them. For example, if you send us, if you're a Nagoya signatory and you send us biological samples, we are legally obliged by the government of Canada to comply with any legislation that your country has. So we need to make sure, and I'm sure that uh, colleagues from other non-signatory countries could say that, uh, could inform on their specific legislation. Uh, but we do have the Wapita Act of 1992, so it precedes uh, the CBD by one year, uh, which explicitly states that uh, nothing can be shipped into Canada in contravention to uh, any law of the state from which it is originating. And so that's specifically been uh, extended to, uh, originally designed for CITES, but that, that has been extended to other organisms. So I'm not sure where the microbes stand in this uh, scenario, but I guess because we're dealing with eukaryotes mostly, uh, that's not an issue. 
There is a number of resources uh, on um, the Nagoya Protocol. So if you want to get more information on that simplified uh, clump of arrows, then there, there's a number of resources uh, developed, uh, starting with the bond guidelines and the um, uh, Consortium of European Taxon uh, Taxonomic Facilities. Yeah. Uh, the GGBN, uh, a number of, uh, of other agreements, and uh, I'd like to highlight this, this book that we've uh, prepared with uh, Kate Davis specifically, intended for barcoders. Um, so that should cover more or less uh, the current best practices related to uh, international transactions of biological materials, and I've been involved in developing uh, material transfer agreement policies for uh, our institution for the last 10 years, I guess, or so. So if you have any questions about what, what our vision is, um, I'd be more than happy to talk about that. Uh, but what I'd like to bring up today is uh, the idea of dematerialization. So we've sort of covered the transfer of biological materials and genetic materials enclosed therein. What is the situation with data and with information? DNA sequences are not, or genetic information is not specifically mentioned in either the convention or the Nagoya Protocol. Um, the results are generally viewed as benefits that need to be shared, um, but um, there's still a little bit of ambiguity. How can countries benefit from the data that are being generated? And of course, because it's up to the nations ultimately to determine legal action on any international treaties, different countries have different definitions. So for example, Brazil explicitly includes genetic information in its legislation and the European Union uh, considers excluding it. Although again, um, there might be slight, uh, slight differences in specific legal wording within uh, the European Union uh, countries. Um, so there has been um, active debate regarding uh, the um, the definition of the so-called uh, digital sequence information. Uh, there have been, um, uh, last February, there's been a, a discussion, the advanced, uh, the ad hoc technical expert group, uh, who has been tasked with the uh, pretty interesting challenge of considering uh, consideration of terminology and any potential implications of digital sequence information on genetic resources for the three objectives of the convention uh, and the objective of the Nagoya Protocol. Uh, so you can see from the very, uh, the task that's being given, it's uh, somewhat uh, of a deviation from the original question of whether or not digital sequence information should be included in the Nagoya Protocol. So not surprising as a result of uh, a, a lengthy and, and uh, occasionally heated discussion, there was no consensus on whether or not the terminology, digital sequence information, is actually a good way to call uh, genetic data, as opposed to, for example, genetic sequence data, which has been already used in, uh, in legal context, uh, did not reach consensus on the scope of what DSI includes, whether it includes genetic information or any other collateral data, such as ecological observations, morphology, images, uh, provenance information, you, you name it, uh, did not uh, ultimately reach consensus of whether or not digital sequence information should be included within the scope of the Nagoya Protocol, and ultimately did not address the elephant in the room of whether the four years that have lapsed since, lapsed since the ratification of the uh, Nagoya Protocol, there has uh, been any clear-cut success stories that this actually works the way it was intended to. And I will uh, personally uh, contribute a, a bottle of uh, liquor of your choice to anyone who names me one uh, clear-cut case when something happened in accordance with that clump of arrows that I sh showed earlier and has generated benefits that have been shared with uh, the provider country, not because they've actually made contribution. There are lots of success stories of actual collaboration where uh, people have mutually contributed to common goals and then shared the benefits of that. Uh, but only when uh, something was sourced in one country and uh, the, all the work was done in another country and the benefits were then shared. Uh, and com those were commercial benefits and not just some, uh, some fees for access or whatever. I am not aware of any such clear-cut case. 
So the few questions that I was hoping to uh, discuss with you stem from uh, one of the follow-ups. Not surprisingly, given the outcomes of the meeting, there's been uh, a lot of um, displeasure expressed by a number of organizations. Um, and um, um, a, an initiative came through the International Chamber of Commerce to put out a joint statement uh, promoting sustainable use and conservation of biodiversity through open exchange of digital sequence information. You'll notice that they're actually using this term, although there's been uh, a lot of pushback against its use. And um, the, uh, the key idea is uh, of that um, joint statement is that including um, information within the scope of uh, the Nagoya Protocol will be counterproductive and potentially damaging to science. And this is one very rare, uh, if not unique, case that I can see when there's been, uh, there have been some synergies between academic institutions uh, and uh, commercial entities, which is quite unheard of. So uh, what I would like to, to bring up for discussion, hopefully we have, yeah, probably won't have time now, uh, are these three topics. So your thoughts on, in general on, on ABS. Apparently it has really good intentions and there have been uh, I think there's a lot of common understanding that biopiracy bio is not good. Um, thoughts about digital sequence information uh, and the topics that were discussed at the OCTEG meeting. Uh, and uh, potential thoughts on whether or not IBOL should be considering uh, a joint position on this, such as uh, maybe joining this stakeholder statement, or at least coming up with its own statement for uh, to be voiced at the upcoming conference of the parties, which will happen in November. Uh, that's that's pretty much all I had to say, and uh, thank you.